you know? And God said, I gave you freedom to go back and forth across the freeway. But there's a principle of consequence. It's an inactive judgment of consequence. And so as God, in His love, not as a dictator, not as an authoritative figure to rule over you in tyranny, but in His love for the creation, He gave us the freedom, like children, to learn to walk, to bump into things, to make mistakes, to screw it up. While He is there with His hand of grace placed upon us to empower us to do what we're called to do. Yeah. You see? But yet when bad things happen, we curse God. And so part of, the, part of the, the whole thing about having a real hope in Jesus is the fact that He is here to reconcile, to remind us that He is passionately in love with us. That he, His heart is like a father looking out at His children. You know? If you have kids, you know that I always say I wasn't really saved until four years ago when my daughter was born. Because there's a part of the character of God that we can't fully understand until we have children. It's too complex. It's too difficult. It's too, like, spiritual and heady and weird. And it's like, oh my gosh, I have emotions I never knew existed. And many of you will experience that in your life. It'll wreck you, man. But it'll, it'll draw you close into a better understanding of who God is. And the fact that He is so in love with you. And that passage I read says that the Spirit of God intercedes for you. That the Spirit, the breath, the life of you is so valuable and so important. The second thing I think you'll find here in this place is many of you are starting to come out of your complacency because the world is shaking around you and you know something's going on. That's the first thing. You ever felt the under, you know, and again, unless you've had a baby, you can't fully understand the birth pains. But you feel that something is changing inside of you, that there's a desperation, an urgency, that God is calling you into something that you haven't fully grasped. How many of you here would say, man, I totally connect with what you're saying? Raise your hand. You feel it. We feel it. That's right. And so the Lord wants to remind you that nothing is of accident. He Himself is calling you to be significant and to have a purpose in these birth pains. But we must choose that. We must turn our face. St. Francis said this. He said the truest act of penance is to turn one's face towards God and to say to God, I am in need of you. And see, that is beautiful. And when you have children, you understand. God loves it when you turn your face to Him and say, would you help me? He loves that. Because He's like, yeah, absolutely I'm going to help you. I love helping you. It's amazing that when Satan comes to attack us, he attacks us through our friends and through our families. He loves giving us earthly fathers that fail us and hurt us. And earthly mothers that fell us and hurt us. Why? So our image of the Father is tainted. And then all we see is a bad father. We only see the hurt. We only see the rejection. We only see the times where they weren't there for us. And Satan comes along and says, that's the way God sees you. Satan comes in the name Lucifer as an angel of light. As an angel of goodness. It's the power of deception that falls upon us. Yeah. And so, man, what God's called our church to in the year of 2008 is an urgency to wake up. To become alive. To stop drooling on ourselves and walking around like zombies. How many of you feel like a zombie, man? <laughs> it's insane. <clears throat> You know, when we talk, watch NFL football or we watch cable news, there's seven layer broadcasting being pumped in your brain all the time. You got the pretty blonde girl. You got the sweet guy with the perfect teeth, right? You got the ticker going at the bottom. You have the blah, blah, blah that they're actually saying. You've got the images shifting. Okay, your brain's only processing like four of these messages at a time. The other three are subliminal. They're programming you here, 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 right? 
And God is in heaven saying, creation, stay awake, stay conscious, stay conscious, stay conscious, stay conscious, stay conscious. Stay conscious. Here I am, stay conscious. Come on. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and we have to fight this. Sometimes I walk around, I get sucked into the stupidest things in life. And I let them just just suck every bit of life out of me. And I have to go, stay conscious, stay conscious, stay conscious, stay conscious, stay conscious. Stay conscious. Yeah, God brought me here to remind you to stay conscious. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get sucked in to the programming of this world. All the things that we argue and fight about are totally not important. Yeah. Right? Last month, I went to a conference called the Unified Underground in Annapolis, Maryland. It reminded me a lot of tonight. And we got to speak there. It was awesome because you had death metal kids and hardcore kids and goth kids and everybody that said, we don't even care about the music or the fashion, the style or the dance or whatever. We just care about the fact that when the crap hits the fan, we are brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yeah. And there was a spirit of urgency, you know, a spirit of consciousness that was there and was awake. And they said, man, no matter what this world brings at us, we stand together. If we die, then we die together. Amen. And see, when we get in an urgent place of understanding that we must wake up, a lot of the things we waste our time on do not matter. Yeah. Now, why do they feel like they matter so much? Because we are filled with fear and insecurity. And the Lord has revealed to me, I really believe, that this is the demonic stronghold that is preventing the church from being the life that it must be. Is fear and insecurity. And we have been programmed since we were children to live in fear and insecurity. Right? Yeah. Dude, I hated high school. Amen. I hated it. I hated clicks. I hated not feeling loved, you know? Dude, how many of us know in this last week or maybe the temptation to come up is we're going to go and hook up with a sexual partner, someone that will use us because they need love and they're feeling insecure and you need love and you're feeling insecure. So you use each other, the creation defining the creation. And why? Because we're filled with fear and insecurity. What would happen? What would happen if the Spirit of God injected Himself into the creation in such a way that the programming fell off, that the fear fell off, that the darkness did not have a place to grip a hold of us, yeah. but we were naked before the Lord spiritually and we say, God, You know me. I want You to heal everything that is yeah. broken in me. Let me breathe the life. Let me see beauty. Let me stay conscious. Let me love the world around us. And this is where the church has totally screwed us all up. You ready? And there's a bunch of them. But here's a big one. The church tells us that it's our choice to love. It's our choice to be happy. It's our choice to be peaceful. It's our choice to be good. And we can, you know, click our ruby slippers together and try really, 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 really hard to be good. But the Word of God says that those characteristics are called the fruit of the Spirit. Which means they are the byproduct of one who is connected to the life force of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we cannot choose to bear fruit. We bear fruit because we can help not to bear fruit. Because the Spirit of God is in us. So when we see genuine love, it's not because they're trying hard, it's because they're filled with the Spirit. When you see genuine peace, it's not because they're trying to, it's because they're filled with the Spirit of God. When you see sincere faith and sincere consciousness and sincere like, whoa, I, a flower, it's beautiful, I love it. You, you're beautiful, I love you. I can see past your perfection, your imperfections, and I see your beauty. It's the yeah. Spirit of God. Amen. See, we can't force ourselves to do it. It's a byproduct of knowing Jesus. It's a byproduct. So that is why it is a real hope. I'll tell you, if you get this and embrace it, it will change your existence. 